Well, what's the concern? Is the concern the fact that they're infringing on our, our rights of privacy, or is the concern that in the hands of some unscrupulous people, leaders, that something else could happen? Yeah. Well, one of the things that's happening, in the, especially in this Patriot Bill, is they seem to be moving away from getting judicial authorization. In other words, it's almost like, well, we don't really have time because of terrorists now. We're just going to do it on our own. Boom. To bother, right, to bother a judge. We're just going to go ahead and do it. You listen to Ashcroft talk about this, and this is how they got this roving wiretap business in. Before, you had to have a, an, a court order for every phone you were going to tap. Mm -hmm. Now, they get this blanket order saying that, well, George Norrie didn't make a difference what George Norrie goes on. We're gonna, we have the authority to get it. You know, mm -hmm. George goes on a cell phone. And uh, we're you know we're just going to get the cell phone. So no matter w what means of communication you jump to, they will jump to it without getting additional judicial authorization. And a lot of the Patriot Bill, you know, seems to get into this administrative stuff in the sense that you're no longer uh, getting judicial authorization. So you're you're breaching the the balance of powers. You know the reason they set up the government with the judicial. Uh, you know, legislative and executive branch was to that these sections would check one another, and so we're getting what we're getting away from is now that they're well, we're too busy for that chasing terrorists, so we're going to abbreviate all that. We're not going to have one section check the other. We're just going to we're just going to do everything administratively. Has it been technology, Roger, that is allowing this to happen at, at such a pace? Definitely, definitely. It's it, we're. It's just unbelievable the speed in which things are going. What are some of the tools out there for people? And, and some of the things, of course, that you do to try to combat it. But what are they using to kind of spy on us? Well, uh, you know, first of all, the most insidious is the fact that everybody's pre-wired. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, there isn't anything to do other than for them to get on a computer and, and hit some keystrokes on a keyboard. And, and it's done. And it's a done deal. Sure, everything that you say, everything that goes across your computer as far as your, you know, keyboard. And um, and then, the, the, you know, even passwords can be can be uh, gotten if they're using a, a keystroke uh, uh, software that's been installed. Sure. In other words, when they, the way they break your, your passwords is uh, make a covert entry into your home and stick a software in there, and that software... Uh, takes down every keystroke, and then you can email the keystrokes out, or they can come back and and, and uh, pick them up uh, by taking them out of the machine on a disk. It's amazing. Yeah, well, it's very serious. It really is. And then, uh, you know, this George George Orwell thing. I wanted to go back to George Orwell for a minute because yeah. you you might recall that in the Orwell book, the justification for everybody giving up their privacy was the fact that there was this dark unknown force out there. Uh -huh. Big Brother talks about it. He says, you know, they were kind of like the evil doers. We don't really know who they are, but we know that they're prepared to destroy us and they're prepared to attack us at any time. So we all need to 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 be under this perpetual surveillance so that uh, we can combat this unknown force. It's really amazing. If you go back and read the Oral hmm. Oral book, I mean it's uh, it, incredible. He had a vision of uh, nine eleven, perhaps. Well, you know that that, that whole thing's been. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of places. You look at. You know, you go back to uh, to the uh, Reichstag building where you know where Hitler blew up his own Reichstag building. Yes. And uh, he wanted to implement gun control and and uh, control of the populations, and so you know that was something that he did. And now we're finding out more about Pearl Harbor as well. You know that there really was intelligence about Pearl Harbor. But yet nothing seems to have been done about Pearl Harbor because that you know they wanted that war commitment. They wanted that reason to get all those young men at that time to to uh, to prepare to go to fight in Europe, which really wasn't you know uh, fighting our own shores. So a lot of times these people that are in power tend to think that the sacrificing people for the good cause, you know, the cause of the. Uh, of the uh, of whatever know, their issue is, whatever, right? Uh, well, the new world order. We can we can use the word George Bush Senior is the guy that brought that in, and that's that's a real factor because uh, there really are forces that would like to remove the constitutions of the comp of the countries and move everything under international corporation control. Have international corporations control all the assets of the world. Have one uh, national army. That would, uh, or, or mm -hmm. international they want army. one national court and one national court, and and that's it. Uh, everybody gets a, a chip under their skin. 
so uh, they've got uh, they've got everybody figured you know on an identity fr- uh, from womb to tomb, and uh, then uh, that's it. It's happening faster and faster and faster. And I don't think it's going to slow down, and I don't think it can be stopped. Now, of course, you spend your whole life checking these things. How do you feel about that? Well, uh, you know, my sense of it is is that in America, you can get as much freedom as you're willing to stand up for. Mm-hmm. I, myself, personally, I have studied law for six years. I have a, a, law, a law library in my house that's in mostly constitutional books, but I've got about $6,000 worth of law books. So that's the way I handle it. And, uh, you know, you really need to study the Founding Fathers and their true intention for this country. A lot of people, though, Roger, don't stand together. And and so what could happen in this particular case is, uh, you know, as those rights are chipped away and as technology continues to get better, it'll be all done and we won't even know it. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing about the sedation of television. You know, television, might, and part of what, what my objection is, and I don't watch a whole lot of television, is that, you know, if you're talking about a mind control element, uh, television is truly <laughs> probably the single most influential mind control uh, machine that they've come up with. Without a doubt. They have done tests where they have taken brain waves of people that are, you know, regular TV watchers, mm-hmm. and they find that a typical TV watcher, uh, someone who watches six hours a night, when they switch the TV on with their with their heads in a brain wave machine, they found that their brain waves went into that alpha euphoric state within 17 seconds. Jeez. And of course, in that, in that particular state, that's when your subconscious is most open. It was a really interesting research. They found that everybody just kind of like drifts off into the into the never never land. Yeah, la 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 land. And yeah. the... so, if you add football, beer, and soap operas, and all the rest of the entertainment things, then really what you're doing is dumbing down America, and they're getting further and further away from what was the force and the concept that made America great. So what's the underlining reason for this kind of control? What do they want? Uh, well, control is, is, is it. That's the key. Sure, yeah. And, uh, the, the, but the thing about it now is they really have the tools to do it. In other words, you know, when you had 100 million or 200 million people, you know, how do you keep track of that? It was impossible to do that. You really couldn't keep track of it. But now when you've got computers that have such incredible power, that you can monitor everybody's bank accounts, and then you put in laws like this Patriot Law, where where now they want uh, banks to report any uh, any cash transactions that I think are now is as low as three thousand dollars. Wow, it used to be what ten? Yeah, it used to be ten, and now uh, it's you know, and and not only that, but they, they before nine eleven they couldn't get that know know your customer through. Yeah, and that was yeah. the, that was the whole concept there. You know that if any you have any uh, financial transactions that were out of normal profile that your bank would rat you out. Well, yeah. but, but, Roger, if you're not doing anything wrong, so what? You know, if, if, if people are squeaky clean or, or uh, you know, just, you know, not going over the line, it appears that aren't they after the real crooks and criminals of the world? Well, <laughs> that's an interesting question of who, who the real crooks and criminals are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you look at the power brokers and the people that are really pulling the strings uh, in the world, and they're the ones that are mostly the... In the, the abusers of all of this. Well, huh? the finance, financial institutions, the people that actually have us as an example. Federal Reserve notes. I mean, they're non-interest-bearing debt notes. They don't actually have any anything. They're not backed by gold or anything. No, and, and, and really, they're not really part of the government, are they? Well, no. The Federal Reserve is about as federal as Federal Express. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, if in other words, if you, I owe you a hundred dollars, then I give you a fed hundred dollar Federal Reserve note, so that discharges a hundred dollar debt that I have with you. Mm-hmm. So we're really awash in debt notes because none of these notes themselves can actually be exchanged for gold or silver. And of course, that constitutionally, that's what our founding fathers called for. Everything had to be gold and silver. As a matter of fact, this is one of the reasons that I think the euro is doing so well because I, I, I haven't been able to exactly find out what percentage, but I have heard that the euro is partially backed by gold. Well, we used to be a long time ago, right? Oh, we did, sure. Yeah, yeah. tech. You could, uh, you know, another thing that FDR did was to was to uh, get us off the gold standard, and then Nixon finished it off. When we come back, I want to talk with you about biochips and implants in people. Okay? No, sure. And a whole bunch more. Lots to talk about tonight. I'm George Norrie with my guest Roger Tulsis. 
We'll be back in a moment as we look into electronic surveillance of you.